Born-Haber cycle is Hesse's law after Max Born and Fritz Haber that they set it up first time to calculate enthalpy lattice for ionic salt. Uh, as example, I'm going to make a thermochemical cycle for potassium bromide. So I'm going to take potassium, which in nature you will find it as solid, it's a metal. I'm going to take bromine, which is a liquid diatomic. Put them together to give you one mole of potassium bromide, KBr, solid. Therefore, I only need half as much bromine. This process that you take elements in their standard state to form one mole of compound is known as enthalpy of formation. One other thing we can do to potassium bromide is we can break it into its ions in gaseous uh, state. So I'm going to do that, and that's known as delta H lattice, usually what you like to find out. So potassium bromide solid is going to break into bromide ion, gaseous, which keeps its distance away uh, from potassium ion, a cation gaseous. So this process is delta H lattice which its magnitude indicates the strength of your ionic salt and its stability. Now according to Hesse's, if I can close this loop, I can do my calculations. So I'm going to go after potassium. First I'm going to take this potassium solid and make it into potassium gaseous atoms, Kg. Now it has many names, it could be sublimation, vaporization, in IV we would like it to be called enthalpy of atomization. The next step is to go from K to K1+, plus. you know that process, that's ionization energy. To remove one mole of electrons from the mole of gaseous atom. So this is ionization energy, endothermic process. Now let's go after bromine. Uh, bromine is held to another bromine by a covalent bonding, and you need to break that to free them up. Now, some books you call it enthalpy of dissociation. Uh, we made it simple, we just call it delta H atomization again. Now, bromine needs to become bromide, so this is a new terminology for you guys. We are going to gain one mole of electrons added to the gaseous atom. This is known as delta H electron affinity. The first one is usually exothermic. Now according to Hess, following the blue arrows, one, two, three, four, some of these blue arrows, you go to fragments of ions, should equal the other pathway, you make it to the same sort of compounds. So I'm going to call this root or path number one and say this pathway or root is equal to root number two, the blue. So according to Hess, root one should equal root two in terms of summing up enthalpies so I'm going to go after root 1, which is delta H formation, delta H lattice, plus delta H lattice. Now these two terms should equal to some of the four uh, blue enthalpies. So they should equal to delta H atomization of potassium, plus delta H ionization of potassium, plus delta H atomization of bromine, plus delta H electron affinity of bromine. Now if you are interested in delta H lattice, then we work it like algebra. We subtract delta H formation from both sides of equality, minus delta HF, minus delta HF, they go away. So delta H lattice is equal to the four terms take away delta H formation. So this is Hesse's law, except we call it Born-Haber, after those two scientists. 
and it becomes handy in order to calculate experimental value of delta H lattice. In the next slide, I'm going to plug in some values and tell you where you find those values from.